Hey, what's up? Dave here with After VFX and welcome back to the channel. Today in this two part series, I'm going to show you how I created this uh, aerial explosion. The first part, which is this tutorial right now, is just going over how I created the explosion simulation using Blender. I'm using 3.0. And then in the second part, I'll show you how I composited uh, this explosion utilizing After Effects and maybe some uh, element 3D components and just lighting and just, just color grading as well. All right, uh, before I get into that, let's just take a quick preview of what we're going to be creating. Okay, so I'm going to break down the uh, aerial explosion. So first thing I've got here is three particle simulations. So this is an icosphere here and I just added a subsurf and a particle system as well. So what I did was, it's pretty similar to the explosion tutorial I did last year. So uh, just keep that in mind. If you haven't watched it, uh, I do recommend watching it uh, because most of the stuff that I did in this tutorial is from what I did uh, in that explosion tutorial as well last year. So uh, first off, I set the particle amount is to 3500. So that's why I get this splash of particles here. And then I've set the frame rate start to 5 and then the end to 20. So we only see the explosion 15 frames and the lifetime is obviously 10 frames as well. I've set the normal velocity to 9 meters. So that just shows how um, like the velocity of the particle. So the higher the value, the more it will spread out going along if I just use my grease pencil tool you the particles will be shooting out like this the lower it will just be like that so just keep that in mind I'll turn on my screen keys as well just in case you want to see what I'm typing and I've added in some uh, force field settings so obviously I set the self deflect and I set it to 1 and then set the turbulence to 20 uh, for strength and size to 8. Okay. So uh, if I just show you this. So that's what it looks like um, with the particles. If I set this down to 0, watch what happens to the particles. It goes whack doodle right here, right? So you don't want that. <laughs> so that's why I just set it to one. At least we just get a bit of control of the density. I believe it's how many particles are affected is it's zero is all particles. Okay, so that's why. Um, so basically that's saying uh, all the particles is at an effector, which means it will collide each other. And that's why I think it's just bouncing off each other like that. So that's why it's going uh, a little bit uh, a little out of control here, so that's why. And I have one final thing I did was I just animated the scale for this. So as you can see, if I just turn off my uh, particles here, you can see I'm just enlarging this scale. So basically, pretty straightforward. Uh, so if you look at the scale, so it's set down to one, and as it plays, it gets larger and larger. So that's basically what it is. Okay, and that's the main source of the particle system. Okay, so that's the first simulation. The second one is this half icosphere. And then, uh, I'll just turn that back on so I don't get confused. Is this half icosphere? Uh, pretty similar settings. Uh, 3000. Uh, frame rate size 10 ends at 20 and I set the lifetime a little longer than the initial one set down the normal to 7 and yeah I'm basically using the velocity and the sorry not the velocity the position and the scale for this to manipulate the particles so I'll just show you what it looks like yeah so as the particles emit from the icosphere so uh, it's emitting based on uh, in the shape of how I want it to, how this icosphere is moving, if that makes sense. 
So like as the particles are emitting, so is it's emitting at the same time as the icosphere is moving. So that's important because you want the particles to be like shaped as the part um, icosphere is moving as well. So that's what it looks like. So there's no scale. It's just the position. That's all. So it's just moving up and that's it. Okay. And just be sure the frame rate start and end is in between the, your keyframes so that uh, you get that kind of look. Okay. And then the last one is just a little bit of a detail one. So I cut out this top half because I only want the particles to be shooting um, downwards or to the side. So it's just basically a way for showing that little, uh, like these little particles just spreading out. So if, I'll explain it uh, once I show you my bait simulation, but it's just to add a little bit of detail to my simulations to show that uh, this is a little bit of randomized um, collision explosion because it is a collision explosion in the end so that's what it is so there's not much difference to this it's just except that I have just actually um, there's quite a big difference actually so I was looking at my second icosphere so it's just 10 and uh, the frame size 5, the frame end is 20, and the lifetime is 50, because I want this to uh, have a long lifetime, so that it frames, um, it stays on screen longer. And obviously the normal uh, is 20, so it's shooting out quite large. And that's it. So I'll just show you that. So it's just shooting out pretty subtle subtle detail and then once we have all three particles uh, superimposed we get this effect so I'll just go to my camera view so that's what it looks like okay so once you've done that you make all of these have a fluid and you set each one to flow fire and smoke in flow use the flow source as the particle system and then select the particle system of the object set size and then to three so i believe for this one i said three the second one three and the last one's one so that's uh just uh keep a key difference in mind. So if you set this to one, it will be kind of look like spaghetti. So just keep that in mind. All right, and then I made a large cube. And then this is the domain. So I set this to gas. This is already baked, by the way, so I don't want you to get confused. I set the resolution to 128. Time scale 1.2. Didn't really change much of the settings here. Set the gas buoyancy to 0.5 and heat 0.5. I just want to have that a little bit of fire reaction. Set the noise to 2. That's what gives this like little scale uh, distortion here. I said it was um, previously in my tutorial. I said it was the time steps. Uh, that helps it, but I think it's mainly the noise. So that's why. And the fire reaction speed to 0.5, so I wanted the fire to stay on just a little longer. And then once you've done that, just set this all to type to all, and then just bake. And then that should do the trick. So once you've got that, uh, you can just go ahead and bake it. I'll just free it all so that you can see what I'm doing. And then... Uh, there was one more adapted domain yeah that's one the one i forgot to talk about okay so just bake this and then just wait a little long depending on the gpu it, uh, if you have a great gpu this shouldn't take too long but mine's pretty old so it does take a bit of time so just be patient with me and i'll pause the video recording and uh yeah we'll just wait and have a look at this Okay, so once your bake has finished, you should get something like this. So this puffy, 
a little smoke um, explosion. And this is why I was talking about those that little detail for the um, where the velocity. There's like these like little like I guess fireballs shooting out the explosion. That's what I was trying to explain. Um, okay, so if I go into my rendered preview mode, you can see that we have this white fireball. Um, I'm not going to show you my material setup, so I'm just show you my shader editor. So this is the material setup for my explosion here. So let's have a look here. So first I got the principal volume, so that's pretty standard. And then for the color, uh, it's similar what I did for the previous tutorial I did, the land explosion. So all I did was use the color ramp, set that through a multiply, a math node and set it to multiply. And that was it really. Uh, however, I did use this volume info node. So I use this, I'm making sure that this factor is set to the color. And then I'm using the density and I feed that through a color. Now this is the change I did. So instead of using a solid color, I used the alpha instead. So what I did was, so if I just show you on a new thing, so I just get color ramp like that. And if you come over to the black, uh, the solid color, if you right click on it and set reset to default value, that would change the black to an alpha. So you can just slide that across however you like it. So that's what I did for the color ramp. So if you come over here, so that's what I did here. Set that through a multiply node, uh, same as, and put that through the density. Okay. And the last one is an attribute node. Put the color through the color ramp. I set the colors. I added some orange and some white uh, here. Set that through the emission color. And then the emission strength, I set it back to 10. And then over time, I started to decrease the emission strength so, so that um, it doesn't get blown out as the uh, animation plays. Okay, uh, black body intensity, set that to 1. Temperature, 1400. So that's what I did. So I'll just show you. Uh, this material setup here. So you can like pause the video if you want and just have a look at it, but that's my setup for the um, materials. Okay. All right, so let's go into the world. And I'm gonna just, I'm gonna switch this to material preview. Go into my render settings or is that the render? I can't remember. Turn that to transparent. And then this should. Yeah. Okay, so basically my uh, environment is this like parking lot here. I'll leave a link where you could download it. So basically that's how I set up my lighting. I'll just show you this uh, what I did here. So I've got my usual mapping here you can just hit Control t to if you don't have it you can go preferences and then the node wrangler anyway and then i've got my parking lot uh environment texture here i adjusted the color uh contrast to this i set the background strength to one and then to surface and then that's what i got this effect i did rotate the lighting so about 71 degrees i wanted light shining from this direction from my camera so lights coming in this way and I added a secondary uh, point line as well just on the side here just so that well, maybe just turn that off so that we can get some light shining through this way as well so that's pretty much it for the lighting uh, pretty straightforward as well I'll just combine that Okay, so if I go into my render settings, okay, so I set the render settings to about 128, set it to denoise. Uh, I turned um, the cl I turned off uh, reflective and refractive. I put the step rate down to 0.95. It does increase your render time just a touch, but 
shouldn't be too bad, hopefully. Um, but if you don't want it to increase, if you don't want to increase render time, just set this all the way back to 1 and it should be okay. I initially set it down to 0.7 and it took like 10 minutes to render one frame. I was like, yep, not doing this. So I just set this to 0.95 and I was like, okay, uh, it's definitely better. Uh, tiling I used 512, a um, bit smaller than usual, but it still was okay. But overall, it was pretty good setup. Uh, didn't really change much settings. I could have turned down the max bounces for this. Maybe that will increase render time, but I didn't even do that. So, oh well. It took me about 12 hours to render this. Uh, and I had not in one go, probably split it between two days, so six hours each day. Yeah, it was a pretty long render. So, yeah, if you have a good GPU, please take advantage of that. Uh, for the render settings here, render region. Yeah, nothing much really. Uh, if you, I didn't even do much in the compositing. I didn't even do any compositing because I knew I was going to do that in After Effects anyway. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the explosion. I know it doesn't sound a lot, but it took me like a good solid week to get this going. It's just a lot of time and experimentation. Uh, that's just been, um, you just don't see behind this. So it did, take a lot, it did take a long time to create this. Let's put it that way. Um, with the explosion, you may see it like a little bit of, it may not be as puffy as you may when you start to render it. That's because you didn't just just bake it first, okay? So, like, if you come over to here, if you put it down to, like, replay, and then, like, you watch it um, in real time, it's going to look not like spaghetti. So just, just bake it at, like, pretty uh, good res solid res, like 128 is pretty solid, maybe a bit lower than average, but like, just do that and then it will look as puffy and then you want to look that. Oh, and uh, yeah, um, just try to watch out for the gradients of the text, of the smoke here. So if you just look at my uh, material preview, um, you can see that this alpha is making the edges a little softer. So I might just try and put this transparent. So it's trying to make it just makes these edges a bit softer. And we'll just watch out for the gradients of the colors. So like it starts off like a dark orange, then it gets lighter and lighter eventually to white. And I wanted the emission strength to decrease from this frame because like that's when the smoke comes and then you don't want that uh, emission to happen while it's just complete black smoke so just keep that in mind okay but other than that just render this out uh, if you have a powerful GPU I suggest you go higher but if you don't um, maybe just go down to like 32 or something because <laughs> um, it is gonna take a long time to render especially for smoke simulations something like this it's it takes a long time so just my keyword for you is patience so be patient with this and uh, yeah but other than that that's the end of the first part for this aerial explosion join me in the second part where we will learn how to composite this inside of After Effects so uh, yeah I hope you enjoyed this tutorial I hope you learned interesting techniques that you can use for your own creations please give a like if you like this video so people can find it Subscribe if you want to see more and be sure to hit that bell button to get the notifications and comment down below if you have any questions and I will see you in the next video where we composite this.